Why did you start this? No, no, it's just so it's so. terrible. And, and, and you and accuse you me of fighting me against the parliament. I'm fighting for my king. Aye, aye, because I lost him. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. No. Ladies, with ease, may we conduct our business? You, sir, explain yourself. I am a Cornish gentleman, sir, and we in Cornwall always support King and Parliament, and now I have been brought to the borders of Plymouth, and the Plymouthians seem to support Parliament but not the King, sir. Right, so you, you have been active for the malignant forces, then? I've been active been in taken, protecting you, Cornwall from been, the Parliament rebels in Plymouth. Sir, Plymouth. we are not in Cornwall, we are in Devonshire. You have been caught in I arms. Got lost. You have been caught in arms for the king at the recent Sabbath Day fight. Is this not so? Yes, and I was trying to get back to Cornwall, sir, and I haven't. But you were caught in arms in action against the forces of the one true Parliament. I was fighting for the one true king, sir. The forces of Parliament. But since for the I king. am, since I am your prisoner, sir, I give you my word of honour. I will not defy you. Do you wish my sword, sir? Now, as a gentleman, we will take your word for it. We trust you are a gentleman. I am, sir. Right. Well, Colonel Smith of Trudask is uh, the well known around these parts. Right. I would like you to go to Colonel Wardlaw and to see if he knows anything about this uh, man and what he would like to be done about it. Right, this is a period of Plymouth's history that for us was a bad time. The Prince Morris was around Plymouth with 10,000 soldiers. We were under strength. We had the forts, but we didn't have the manpower. We had the guns, but we didn't have a lot of ammunition. So what we did, we occupied, like I said, the forts. The Prince Morris made a major attack against the Lipsum Fort. Well, he came further down and overwhelmed the Lera Point work and the Battle of the Sabbath Day fight was fought on December the 3rd. We've just come and seen a situation where the two women were upset, very upset, because they don't know if their husbands had survived the battle, where a hundred local men and soldiers died and were wounded and captured. The parliamentarians' losses were one to three, they say, but obviously in war it's exaggerated. The Roundhead militia man who fought under Captain Philip Francis brought in a prisoner, a Roundhead, a Royalist gentleman, um, they were going to sort of take him into custody and see what they could do with him. Uh, they were talking about the Battle of Freedom Fields, as it's called now. Um, now, the situation was resolved shortly after Christmas Day when the Royalists withdrew from Plymouth and left the town to lick its wounds, repair its forts and bring in more supplies and manpower. I was just going to say as well an add-on, this war proves like all civil wars, the divisions in families, brothers against brothers, fathers against sons. And a good example of this was a, a man called John Cloberry, whose brother George was in the Royalist garrison at, at Plimpton for later in the war. Um, he was in the garrison at Plimpton. His brother John was in Plymouth. Now, George was killed during the fighting and his burial record is, is recorded in St Andrew's Church. Um, John, they said, was very upset by this and executed the two Royalist Roundhead soldiers who killed his brother in action. That's a fantasy, it didn't happen. But John Cloberry went on to become uh, MP uh, and uh, was knighted by Charles II and is buried in Winchester Cathedral. But it just gives you an idea of what the, f the family uh, situation was in Plymouth. A lot of parliamentarians had split their family. Some changed sides. They, just before the Freedom Fields battle, the Sabbath day fight, there was um, two men called Collins and um, Pike who betrayed Plymouth. They left their families and went and put, went, joined the other side. This happened usually when the King's forces were very close and people changed sides. Sir Francis Drake's two nephews were um, Francis and Thomas. 
Thomas changed sides. So he was on the opposite side of his brother for a while, but he came back. It just gives you an idea what a civil war can do to families.